Hi, I'm Jeff Powell, and I'm here at Sam Phillips Recording Studio. Uh, we're in Studio A right now, but we're going to go into my room, and I have a Neumann VMS 70 Lay, then we're going to cut a track off the Van Duren soundtrack album. I have a tank of helium and a tank of nitrogen back here, so I gotta turn the gases on. The helium goes into this apparatus here, and I control how much or how little actually goes to this tube and feeds the cutter head, actually cools the stylus. So if it's an album that has excessive high-end information, you might add a little more helium to keep the stylus from overheating and keeping it cool. Just a trickle of it. So the kind of lacquers I use for the most part, these are called MDCs. This is one of the expensive parts of cutting vinyl. These are about 40 bucks a piece. So you make a couple of mistakes here and there. It gets expensive real quick. <laughs> I'm just blowing any dust or anything that might be hanging around on here. You want it to be completely clean. Now I'm gonna spin it up and I'm gonna pull this microscope over here and I'm gonna cut what we call a silent groove. When I'm doing that, I'm doing two things. I'm actually setting the groove depth and looking at it under the microscope while I do it to get the proper depth on it and the spacing and the land between the grooves when I'm doing music. I have to turn on the vacuum over here. When the styli is cutting the record, it actually picks up that little thread that it's cutting and sucks it up and it collects into a jar underneath the leg. Now look under the microscope check how deep the groove is and, and the space between it. Yeah, so I play the music to see the groove, make sure I'm cutting deep enough, and then I also check the what we call the land in between the grooves. If you cut it too deep, they start crump coming into each other and you can have what's called an overcut, and that's what causes skips. So I think we're good to go for real. Because you mean so much. The ideal length for a 33 and a third album is 18 minutes or less. I can cut longer sides, but it's at the sacrifice of volume and low end. We do what we call dummy runs, where we actually set everything up and you make a run of the side without dropping the cutter head, but it moves across and does everything as if you were cutting it. And you see there's a ruler before you hit the zero. You want to make sure that you get in all the music on there before it hits that. Again, I'm spreading the grooves here on this fade out. Speaking of which, now we can listen back at a we can listen back at a more reasonable level. We can crank it. Don't give me lame excuses. I won't believe a word you say. You get what we just listened to there. That's that's one of the best parts of this job when you actually get to cut a piece and listen back to it. You'll probably never hear it sound that good again. It's just absolutely pure. Once. We cut the side for real, and it's time to ship it away. I can't play it. I can't check, spot check it or anything because it destroys the high end on it. So we have to look at it under the microscope, make sure everything looks good, and then put it in a box, bolt it down, and send it out FedEx, and it needs to be turned into metal plates within 72 hours. But the other great, one of the most fun parts is when the box comes in the mail and it's the test pressing. And you put it on six weeks later after you cut it, and you get to listen to it, and it's and it's beautiful. Then uh, that's there's not a, that's just a great feeling. Yeah.